Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the Women's Army Corps. Our story is entitled, Wine to Vienna. It concerns itself with the first sergeant of a WAC detachment. She is Julia Kingsley, and she's stationed in West Berlin. And this looks like just another routine day for her, so far. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Young man, be honest with yourself. Have you reached a standstill in life? Is each day just like any other? Are you worried about your future? And most important of all... Are you feeling dissatisfied with yourself and your personal development? Well, if this description or any part of it fits you, it's just about time you investigated the opportunities waiting for you when you enlist in the United States Army. Every man in the Army has a skill, and more often than not, the Army taught him that skill in one of its fine schools. The Army offers an interesting present and a secure future, with plenty of promotions along the way. And above all, the Army molds you into a man, a man whose family, friends, and country are proud of him. If you think you can measure up, stop in at your nearest recruiting office and see if you can qualify to wear the mark of a man, the uniform of your United States Army. And now your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, Wine to Vienna. <laughs> The sergeant's blonde hair was worn in a most becoming upsweep. Just a few touches of makeup were all that were needed to bring out the highlights of a naturally pretty face. The uniform looked as though it might have been tailored by a leading dress designer. All in all, the sergeant looked as though she might be a smart executive in, say, an advertising agency or a big department store, or any one of a number of high-powered civilian enterprises. Actually, she did have an important job in what you might call a fairly large and complex organization, the United States Army. As for the job, well, there isn't anything exactly like it anywhere in the world. She was a first sergeant. Now, there's an occupation for you. A first sergeant is the kind of combination psychologist, foreman, executive, sage, and miracle worker. A first sergeant has to be able to think like an officer also has to be able to think like an enlisted man. A first sergeant is a little bit of everything. A jack of all trades and a master of all trades. Come in. You that for me, ma'am? I um, have a few questions before I sign these papers. Sit down, sergeant. Thank you. Why do you disapprove of a furlough for Yates? Because Connolly put in for one at the same time. Connolly's work is better, and she deserves one first. I uh, see you okayed a pass for Smith. I remember her at infection. Very poor showing. She certainly shouldn't have a pass coming. Oh, well, Captain, Smitty takes things to heart. She got a reprimand from you and a tougher one from me later on. She's been nervous about it all week. I don't think it's necessary to do any more in her case. She'll be okay from here on in. Why do you recommend Gordon for the open corporal's rating? Offhand, I can think of three or four others who seem to know more about the work. Well, Gordon takes a little longer to learn, but what she learns stays with her. She doesn't talk much, so people might think she doesn't know much. But give her something to do, and she does it without any questions. She's not afraid of responsibility. <laughs> you know, Sergeant, it strikes me that there's absolutely nothing you don't know about the members of this company. That's my job, Captain. That's true, it's a job. But you've made a great deal more than a job out of it. You've made it your whole life. It's a pretty good life. <laughs> you know that you're the only first three grader in the company who isn't married? Well, I haven't met the guy yet, Captain. Bet you're not looking for him either. 
Well, all I can tell you is that the Commander-in-Chief himself is married, and it certainly didn't interfere with his career. I suppose I'll just have to get married one day, Captain. Everybody seems to be so worried about it. Except you. Look, naturally it isn't any of my business, but you just can't bury yourself in the past. It's been 11 years. Well, what am I complaining about? I've got the best-run orderly room in the Army. Captain, I promise I'll invite you to the wedding. <laughs> At the rate you're going, I'll be able to bring my grandchildren. <laughs> oh, I nearly forgot. An uncle of mine's in Europe on a business trip. and He'll be in Vienna over the weekend. I was wondering... Why don't you take a furlough? Oh, a weekend pass should be enough, Captain. Well, don't you want to see the sights in Vienna? It's a romantic city. No, I don't suppose you do. <laughs> And so, our brisk and efficient Sergeant Kingsley returns to her desk. She'll be gone for about three days, when in her characteristic way, she prepares the office as though she were leaving for a year. Now, you shouldn't have any trouble with the morning report. Remember, we have three enlisted women in the signal department who aren't part of the detachment, only carried for rations. So make sure you don't add them to the totals. Uh, the files are up to date... But if you should get into trouble, I'll be at the Hotel Imperial in Vienna. Oh, we'll get along, Sergeant. Oh, I almost forgot. There was a call for you from... Uh, where did I write down her name? Oh, here it is. Sergeant Miller in Intelligence. Oh, did she leave a message? She wants you to call her back. Says it's important. Mm -hmm. uh, there was another call from that guy in Ordnance. Oh, him. Well, what's wrong with him? A guy like that should only ask me for a date. Sergeant Miller, please. Go ahead, disregard these guys. But one day that blonde hair will turn to silver and then see how they disregard you. Hey, Julia. Who? Colonel Bowen? No one's about? Okay, tell him I'll be right there. Listen, if the captain should want me, tell her I've been called over to see Colonel Bowen. Now, what does he want? Sergeant, there may be something to this, and then again, probably not. I understand that you're a friend of Sergeant Miller in my office. Yes, sir. Sergeant Miller happened to mention to me that you have dinner quite often at a restaurant known as Mama Schoenbrunn's. About three times a week, Colonel. Our office has reason to suspect that Mama Schoenbrunn's may be the center of a red espionage ring. Mama Schoenbrunn's? We may be wrong, of course, but at this point we're trying to get a line on the place... Uh, tell me, you go there often. Did you ever notice anything which may have struck you as being even slightly suspicious? No, sir. Mama Schoenbrunn herself, are you friendly with her? Yes, sir, I think so. Every time I go there, she sits at my table for a while and we talk. About the Army? No. Uh, looking back at it, could you ever get the idea that she might be trying to pump you about any Army information? No, sir. What do you talk about? Well, sir... About me, mostly, and why I don't get married. I see. Well, you have a reputation for being alert and observant, and to the best of your knowledge, you'd know of no single instance where there might be anything suspicious in her conduct. Absolutely not, sir. No, as I said, we have nothing definite to implicate her in any way. As a matter of fact, sir, I'm having dinner there tonight. Oh, good. If there should be anything at all unusual, no matter how unimportant it may seem to you, let me know about it. Yes, sir. So, and what is new with us tonight, Sergeant? Oh, nothing. Oh, yes, there is. I'm going to Vienna for a couple of days to meet my uncle. Your uncle? Oh, better you should go there to meet a nice young man and then get married. <laughs> it is nice to be married. I have been married four times. Oh, I see so many good-looking men in the United States Army. You mean that none of them will ask you? A few of them ask me, but I... Ah, I know. Love. Ah, the first time I married, it was for love. When he died, I married for money. And when he died, well, I married because I was in the habit. <laughs> uh, how is Vienna? Have you ever been there? Wien? Oh, wunderbar. If a girl will not find romance in Wien, she was born to be an old maid. You know, I have a niece who lives there. I wonder, uh, 
could you do something for me? What is it? Oh, no, no, no. It, it is too much trouble. Well, tell me. Well, you see, she is so fond of this wine I make. I was wondering if you could take to her a couple of bottles. Why, that's no trouble at all. I could put them in my bag. You are sure it is no trouble? Oh, it is such good wine, and it reminds her of home. Poor child. She is very lonely in the inn. Why, I, uh, I'd be glad to do it. I will give you her address. Sergeant? Yes. Anything wrong? Well, you had a phone call at the orderly room. It was from your uncle. He says he's been called back suddenly to his New York office. He won't be in Vienna at all. He tried to reach you before you made the trip for nothing. Oh, I see. Well, thanks, Martha. Um, don't say anything about it, huh? Ah, uh, too bad. Now you will not go to Wien. Uh, Mama Schoenbrunn, um, can you keep a secret? For you, anything. Well, you see, I, I really wasn't going to Vienna to meet my uncle at all. Oh? I mean, I would have had lunch with him, maybe, but his coming was just an excuse to get a pass this weekend. You see, there's a certain master sergeant. Oh, of course. I see. And I think maybe he's the one, and he's expecting me. Ah, never disappoint a man. You must go. So, if you want me to deliver the wine... <laughs> I would never have thought anything of it, sir, if you hadn't talked to me today. Yes, you did the right thing. On the chance that maybe there's something wrong, I thought quickly and made up a very phony excuse for going to Vienna anyhow. Now, why should she want me to deliver some wine? Could she be using me as a messenger? Maybe there's a message on the labels. Maybe not. Maybe I'm going to make a trip to Vienna for nothing. Well, our laboratory section is working on the labels right now. If there's nothing, you've scheduled yourself for a trip for nothing. But you used quick thinking. Thank you, sir. Excuse me. Colonel Bowen? Yes? Well, now, this puts the whole thing on a paying basis. Fix up the labels to look just the way you found them. Yeah, thanks. Sir, is there something... There's a message written in disappearing ink over the labels on the bottles. It's in code. We'll try to crack it. Oh, then Mama Schoenbrunn is an agent. You'll get the bottles back from the lab in a few minutes. And you want me to deliver them? No, not you, but we have no choice. That's the way they transmit messages, and so for our purposes, we want it kept open. I would rather Sergeant Miller were in your shoes right now. This isn't a job you were trained for. Well, sir, all I have to do is deliver a few bottles of wine. All you have to do is to keep them from suspecting you know what they're up to. It's hard to explain this to an amateur, even someone as bright as you are. You're being asked to play a game that's new to you. If you didn't know what you were doing, it'd be all right. You'd ring the bell and say, I have a gift here from Mama Schoenberg, and that'd be all. Now you'll ring the bell and say the same thing, but it'll be different. Why, sir? Because you'll be armed with and impeded by knowledge. How about your reflexes? Will your hand shake? Will there be a tone of excitement in your voice? What will show in your eyes? Who knows? Uh, we're up against smart people. People who have set up the most ruthless and shrewd espionage ring in the world. How long have you known Mama Schoenbrunn? Talked with her? Did she ever give herself away? Of course not. Could you be as self-possessed as she is? I'll do my best, sir. You'll have to follow through on what you told Mama Schoenbrunn. You said you were going to Vienna to meet a man. You'll meet him. But I don't know anybody in Vienna. You do now. You said you had a date. Sergeant Kingsley, a date is waiting for you in the railroad station in Vienna. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Wine to Vienna. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. High school seniors, here's an important message for you. The United States Army's Reserve for You program will guarantee you a classroom seat in an exciting Army technical career course before you enlist. You'll get top-notch training, on-the-job experience, while serving side-by-side -side with America's finest young men. The choice is wide open, and it's yours to make. High school graduates can choose from more than 100 interesting career courses that range from atomic technician through welding. A fact-filled booklet called Reserve for You tells you about the entire program. Get in on the swing. Get your free copy of Reserve for You by visiting or writing your nearest United States Army recruiting station. 
You're listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Wine to Vienna. First Sergeant Julia Kingsley is en route to Vienna from Berlin. As a favor to restaurant owner Mama Schoenbrunn, Julia is taking some bottles of wine to Mama's niece. Meanwhile, Army Intelligence and Julia have discovered that she is being used as a courier for a red espionage ring, since the labels on the bottle contain a message in code. Colonel Bowen decides that the agents should not be made suspicious, that they are being watched, and Julia is directed to make the delivery as promised. And now it is the following day, and Julia's train has just arrived at the railway station in Vienna. Julia! Julia, honey! Baby, I was afraid you'd miss the train. What's the big idea? Careful, careful. Now look at me like I'm a long-lost lover. Kiss me. All right, I'll kiss you. You don't know if we're being watched. Now play it happy. Oh, sweetie, I'm living again. What hotel are you staying at? Let's hop a cab, drop off your bags, and I'll show you the town. My name is Kenneth Linwood. Call me Kenny. Come on, come on. Do the deliver bit. Oh, uh, uh, Kenny. Kenny. Where's Hoffmannstallstrasse? Well, why? Well, it's a long story. Some woman I know in Berlin asked me to drop off some wine to her niece, and that's where she lives. Okay, we'll find it. First, we'll get you settled. Ah, uh, taxi! Tell the driver the hotel. The Imperial driver. Yes, to reach You heard the sergeant driver. Don't let us detain you. Sergeant Linwood. Ixnay. I... You can't tell who this driver could be. Light and gay, honey. Hey, why don't we get married? I could swing a transfer to Berlin. Get married? Well, why not? Millions of people get married. Some of them even make a success of it. You know, I'll never forget the night we met. Aren't you you remember? carrying this a little bit too far? You're playing a part, baby. You'll have to live it. Okay, I'll propose again after lunch. Uh, you know you're crazy. Sure. I'm crazy about you. The first second we met, I said to myself, Kenny boy, seek no further. Here she is. Uh, keep the change. Oh, thank you. Now what? Now we drop off your bag and deliver the wine. Uh, look, can we talk here for a minute? I don't understand this act of yours. Uh, go inside and register. Are the bottles wrapped up? Yes. Well, take them out of your bag. And meet me out here. We have to get this over with quick. Uh, you, you know, you're kind of obnoxious. I'd like to deliver the wine and get rid of you as soon as I can. Well, I'm sorry, but we have to make this whole deal stand up. I'm afraid you're stuck with me for the whole weekend. Oh, no. Oh, yes, dear. I'll wait here. Got a match, Sarge? Hmm? Oh, yeah, sure. She the one? Mm-hmm. And we'll walk to the place. We won't let you out of sight. And Charlie's covering the house. All right. Have we been tailed? I think so. Cab followed you. Guy got out. He's across the street looking in the shoe store window. I see him. Okay. Thanks, Sarge. You know, the more I've been thinking about this, the less I understand it. Why do we have to pretend... Oh, I got something in my eye. Uh, here, take my handkerchief. Oh, where is it? And leave the eye alone. I wanted you to have an excuse to turn around. Now, a guy with eyeglasses and a black coat should be standing across the street. You see him? Yes. Well, don't gawk. What's he doing? Is he crossing over this side? Yes. That's all I want to know. He's telling us. Why? Thanks, honey. Ah, you got it out. Come on. Now, just to make sure, there's a sidewalk cafe just ahead. We'll turn in there and have coffee. But why should this... I'll tell you over some Java. Ah. Let's sit here. Uh-oh. Buster wants coffee, too. Uh, Sergeant Linwood. Kenny. 
if Mama Shundran wants to send a message to another spy, why can't one of her own agents take the wine bottles? Percentages. A guy who did that would have to be a professional. There's always a chance that somebody might have him spotted. Now, but a person still, like you... wouldn't it be simpler? Mama suspects we may be watching her in Berlin. Nothing definite, just a hunch on her part. You see, you're ideal. Why should you figure there's anything wrong in delivering some wine for a friend? And if Peggy Miller hadn't thought of having Colonel Bowen talk to you, would you have told him or anybody else about the wine? I guess not. No, Mama took a chance, but she figured she had the odds in her favor. Now her people are watching you to make sure you're just a girl on a holiday in Vienna with a heavy date, just as you claim. In order to make the thing go off, you and I have to make like two lovesick kids. You wish to order. Two coffees and soccer tort. Yeah. Now remember, Buster over at that table is watching and trying to listen. So give him an earful. Kenny, uh, let's run this errand, then go on a picnic. It's such a lovely day. Great. I bet he heard every word. <laughs> There's the house. Two in from the corner. Nervous? Sure. Well, at least you don't show it. Oh, uh, Kenny, I forgot. What's this woman's name supposed to be? Frau Rievertz. Frau Rievertz. Okay. I'll ring the bell. Say, are your eyes blue or green? It's hard to tell. Yeah. Uh, are you Frau Rievertz? I have a present here from Mama Schönbrunn in Berlin. She's a friend of mine and asked... Um, Auntie, ah... Uh... Auntie's wine. Will you come in and have a glass? Oh, well, no, thanks. You see, we have a date and we're late now. And, 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 and you went to so much trouble. Oh, there's no trouble. I'm staying at the Imperial. It's only a couple of minutes' walk from here. Tell Auntie I'm so happy she thought of me. I will, I will. I'll be back in Berlin the day after tomorrow. Thank her, please. And thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Goodbye. Auf Wiedersehen. Good luck. How'd I do? Great. Refusing the invite to come in was an inspiration. It means you're not curious. You just pass the whole thing off, favor for a friend, and just enough impatience to want to get it over with and go about your own business. Buster still with us? Yeah, Buster's across the street, making believe he's interested in a book in the store window. Well, aren't we in the clear now? Oh, no. These people have to make sure they're playing for high stakes. You told Mama Schoenbrunn you were coming here to meet a certain master sergeant. Now, you mustn't be caught in any kind of lie, otherwise we'd lose control. Control of what? You see, Mama wants to make you her message center. Now, we say, Mama, go to it. So you and I are going to be on the town. Oh, don't worry. Buster will never be too far behind. We've got us a chaperone. All right, admit it. Admit what? Admit you're having a good time. Shall we sit this one out? Okay, let's go back to the table. <clears throat> you know something? For a girl as pretty as you are, you're a pretty bad dancer. Well, I'm a little rusty, that's all. You mean you don't do much dancing? No. I haven't danced in, oh, I guess 12 years. I should think you'd be rushed off your feet. What's the matter with those guys stationed in Berlin? Nothing. Well, I'll tell Kenny all about it. About what? Well, you don't seem to know what it is to relax and have a good time. Uh-uh. Buster's here, too. He's got a girl with him. Well, what do you know? It's Frau Rebitz. They're on the dance floor. It's funny, isn't it? His name was Kenny, too. Who? A boy I know. We were engaged. He's in the invasion of North Africa. His mother called me up one morning at 2 o'clock. She just received the telegram. I'm sorry. And the very next day I enlisted. Been in ever since. As far as boys were concerned, I just never get interested in anybody. Is that why you became the best first sergeant in the WAC? I wonder why I told you that. I've never told it to anybody. Ah, uh, hello. Oh. Hans, this is the soldier who brought us the wine from Auntie, my husband. Oh, how do you do? And this is Sergeant Linwood. I hope you're having a good time. You will thank my aunt, no? Oh, yes, of course. Good. I'll feed us in. That's 
think you brought it off. You know, I know that guy. He's Mr. Big of the whole operation. Look, they're leaving the cafe. You've sold them your story, all right? I hope so. Well, I have to be fair about this. You did the job. You can take off anytime you want. Well, I still have another day I can spend in Vienna. Mama Schoenburn herself told me there was so much to see here. I wish I knew somebody in town. Hey, where do you get that? You know me? Yes, I know you. Line of duty. But I told you I'd take you out as long as you stayed here. Sergeant Linwood, when a girl is on her own time, she likes to be asked. Where did you see my niece? Oh, oh yes, and she was so happy to get the wine. And uh, did you see anyone else? Uh-huh. Oh, what a question I should not have asked. <laughs> oh, it was a lovely weekend in more ways than one. So, will you marry me? I think so. Ah, you <laughs> promised you will invite me to the wedding. Yes, yes, you and my CEO. You both deserve to be there. Uh, he can't get a pass next weekend, but I can. Will you be going back? Uh-huh, of course. Uh, perhaps you can bring my niece some more wine? Oh, that wine was very lucky for me. Any time I go, I'll be happy to deliver it. Oh, you are so kind. Now, don't Sarah. forget, call on me any time, Mama Schoenbrunn. I'll be going to Vienna quite often, I think. Our intelligence was able to crack the coded messages, and Sergeant Kingsley served as courier for three months until it was decided to round up the West Berlin members of the espionage group. And then, of course, Sergeant Kingsley no longer had any excuse to travel to Vienna. But by then, it was no longer necessary, because Sergeant Linwood transferred to Berlin. Why? Very simple. He wanted to be stationed near his wife. And her commanding officer thinks that she is even a more efficient first sergeant than ever. Did you know that you can get ahead, enjoy your work, have security and a steady job, all when you enlist in the United States Army? Why, you'll get your first promotion when you've been in only a few months. There's a wide variety of jobs available, but most important, you'll be helping to preserve the national security of our country. Why don't you check at your local recruiting office and let them tell you how you can make the most of your life in the United States Army. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army, and this is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>